Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about how Citadel has just been liquidated over here in the UK. I want to talk about the difference between a solvent or a voluntary liquidation and an insolvent or an involuntary one. I want to talk about whether Citadel has really just lost billions of dollars or if they've strategically transferred their money and their FTDs elsewhere. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So Frank tweeted saying, is this real? You know the $1.5 trillion margin call happening in Europe? Well, the Citadel European Fund or Citadel's UK office has just been wound up voluntarily. It says the fund of Citadel Europe LLP registered in England and Wales will be wound up voluntarily. It says that two individual employees of PricewaterhouseCooper or PwC have been appointed as joint liquidators. Now Citadel have also had to complete a declaration of solvency and it says the declaration of solvency attests to the fact the company is in a solvent position and that any outstanding liabilities aka margin loans can be made in full to creditors within 12 months of the liquidation process commencing. So what Citadel has just performed is a voluntary or a solvent liquidation. Now that does differ to an involuntary insolvent liquidation, but I do think Citadel may have just lost billions either way. Now an insolvent or an involuntary liquidation is something that's made when a company has lost all of its money, including any margin loans or any loans or any funding they've received from third parties. You're insolvent and involuntary liquidated if you can't afford to pay back your creditors within the next 12 months or in any period at all, really. Now, I think it's important to remember that if you or I take out a margin loan, our trading platform will liquidate our account before we lose any of that margin loan. When we suffer a 100% loss of provided collateral, that's when our accounts are liquidated. And the exact same thing goes for hedge funds and for market makers as well. For example, if you buy $1,000 of a stock or $1,000 of a crypto using a 10 times leverage ratio, you're leveraged at a ratio of 10 to 1. For that $1,000 of stock, you've only contributed $100 and you've taken a margin loan for the remaining $900. Now, if that stock falls by 10%, you get liquidated on that position. The stock has only decreased by $100, but yet your entire position is still liquidated. And that's because you've lost 100% of that committed collateral. You've lost all of those $100 that you contributed, and therefore your position is liquidated. The trading platform doesn't wait until you lose $200 or $300 or $500. They liquidate you as soon as you lose that original $100 that you contributed for that trade because obviously the trading platform doesn't want to lose money. And the exact same thing goes for these hedge funds and for these market makers as well. If Citadel has taken on a collateral loan from Bank of America, from Credit Suisse, from JP Morgan or anybody else and they've lost their original collateral, their account or their position is liquidated. Therefore, if Citadel has lost 100% of the original capital that they contributed to their trades, this is still classed as a voluntary or a solvent liquidation because they can still afford to repay that margin loan. Therefore, it is very possible that Citadel may have just lost every single penny and been liquidated in the UK, maybe as a result of these rising energy prices. But obviously because Citadel have only lost their money, they haven't lost any of this margin loan that they took out from Bank of America or from JP Morgan. They're being liquidated, but it's technically a solvent voluntary liquidation. However, as Edward Burchuk tweeted, maybe instead they've just moved cash or their FTDs into a separate entity. There's also another entity in the UK called Citadel HF Management Europe LLP. Therefore, Citadel may have just transferred any remaining cash or any remaining short positions or any remaining FTDs into a separate entity, maybe to reset the counter on a regulation SHO threshold list security, which I think is very aptly timed considering that Ape has just been removed from the threshold securities list. However, as Spence tweeted, there seems to be multiple different data points that don't really know whether Ape has yet actually been removed. Therefore, maybe the New York Stock Exchange removed Ape from the Regulation SHO threshold securities list. Maybe they were told to or forced to by a higher power, but yet some of these other data providers haven't yet been told to remove Ape. Spence tweeted saying, what is going on here? Zero reporting consistency from the NYSC, or is there false reporting from other agencies? Up until 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning, Ape was still on the threshold securities list over on Interactive Brokers. However, at this time, it had already been removed from the NYSC list. As I said, maybe the NYSC have been told to remove Ape from their threshold securities list, but that message hadn't yet been passed to other data providers. 
Or maybe these short positions have been transferred from one fund to another fund. Maybe a fund has just closed down in the UK and these FTDs have been shifted to another fund and therefore the timer has been reset. Now Delta Juliet posted saying, every time I see a post or a comment on the 13 day threshold securities list, many of you mention that it will magically disappear again. She said, remember there is no options chain to hide those failure to delivers. There's effectively no ways for them to hide those FTDs. However, these hedge funds can still transfer their FTD positions either internally or externally to other individual funds. But she says so far, Ape has shown an absolute mess in the market and they are scrambling to find real Ape shares. She said yes, previously they have gotten away with it. They've created separate rules made in their favour or they've changed the existing rules. But she said every battle is one you should take on with the highest amount of courage, energy, focus and willpower. While Ape may have been removed from the threshold securities list because the counter has been reset, that doesn't mean these fails aren't still occurring. We'll only know if these fails are in the millions or the hundreds of millions in a few weeks when the FTD data is released. I think at the moment it's difficult to say whether Citadel really has just been liquidated in the UK and lost billions if not hundreds of billions or whether they're just shifting positions and FTDs internally or if they're just doing some internal reorganisation. These documents obviously don't say if Citadel Europe LLP is moving assets elsewhere, it just suggests that Citadel Europe LLP is being liquidated or wound up voluntarily. It doesn't say what value of assets Citadel Europe LLP held and what value of assets is left or what value is being transferred. Maybe they had hundreds of billions, but now they have a flat zero. Maybe they had hundreds of billions, now they have only 50 billion left that's being transferred elsewhere. I don't think these documents are complete enough to get a full understanding of exactly what Citadel are doing, how much money they've lost, or exactly what they're doing with the FTDs, but it does seem quite suspect. It seems suspect the day that Citadel Europe LLP is being wound down is the exact same day that Ape is removed from the NYSC threshold securities list. Now I don't know whether those two things are linked or whether they're just coincidental or whether Citadel has really just lost billions or if they're just shifting assets around elsewhere. But something I do think is criminal is this new post on the NASDAQ media section. It says don't go Ape for AMC, be a real investor instead. So it seems like even the NASDAQ stock exchange is promoting people not to buy into AMC or into Ape shares, telling you to go elsewhere. Now I think it's one thing to see the mainstream media obviously controlled by these hedge funds promoting you not to buy AMC shares, but to see stock exchanges themselves telling you or begging you not to buy AMC is a different thing entirely. Hang Loose tweeted saying for the 20th month in a row, they're still begging you to not invest into AMC. This is an exchange promoted article. Ask yourself, why do they so badly need to convince you to stay away? I think this really does go to show just how far the corruption actually stretches, not just from these hedge funds to the SEC, but even into these stock exchanges as well. But I also found a very, very interesting small extract on this article from Benzinga. The article is titled saying, apes have locked up this many millions of GameStop shares via DRS, so what's going on? And in this key point section it says shares that are directly registered aren't available for brokers to lend out to short sellers, and amid this shrinking supply, an inability for short sellers could cause the mother of all short squeezes. We know that obviously short sellers don't care about legally locating and borrowing shares, they just illegally create synthetics anyway and continue shorting. But obviously if a very large portion of the float is locked up, it simply exposes exactly when synthetic shares are being created. Obviously if a large portion of the float is locked up, there is no physical way they can legally short, and therefore this would cause an inability for short sellers to do the shorting, because there's no way they can do it legally, or even pretend that they're doing it legally. And this inability could cause the mother of all short squeezes. Now while I do think DRSing is a good idea, I think it's also something that AMC crowd has never been too fond of. Obviously the GameStop crowd is DRSing their float, but so far it hasn't caused a GameStop squeeze. But I do think it's something to pay attention to. When these short sellers can no longer legally or even pretend to legally short these shares, will it cause the mother of all short squeezes? And obviously at that point, if it does cause GameStop to squeeze, I do think it's something that should be replicated in AMC to cause AMC to squeeze as well if it doesn't squeeze immediately alongside GameStop. But obviously, as I said, at this point, I don't know whether it's necessary. Obviously, GameStop investors are DRSing their float, but so far it hasn't caused the GameStop squeeze. 
But as I've spoken about many times before, something I do think that will cause the squeeze guaranteed is the current market crash. An unusual Wells has tweeted saying that Goldman Sachs believes the jump from mid-June was indeed a bear market rally. Therefore, even Goldman Sachs is saying that right now we are in a bear market and the S&P 500 and the stock market is crashing. They said the brief run-up that we did see back in June was simply a bear market rally and the crash will resume and will get worse. An unusual Wells has also tweeted saying mortgage rates in the US have just jumped to 5.9%, the highest level since 2008. And as Brett Edwards tweeted, he said, uh-oh, that doesn't look too good. 2008. It really does smell like 2008 right now. And the smell is even stronger. This to me suggests the US housing market is primed for a crash. Mortgage interest rates are sky high. Prices are being dropped left, right and center. Sales are down, but inventory is up. To me, it sounds like a crash is coming. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.